Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. The 20th conference on climate change is being held at Lima in Peru, where over 190 countries are participating. The conference of parties, as it is known, is specifically discussing the issue of cut in carbon emissions. The conference will discuss each country's emissions and the proposal for cutting them over time. The dangers of allowing these emissions without significant reduction is expected to create a serious situation as far as climate change is concerned. However, for some years now, these conferences have found it difficult to come to an understanding over how much emission cut can different countries achieve or ought to achieve. The differences between the developed and the developing countries where the latter feel they are unfairly targeted has been one of the reasons. Meanwhile, US and China have struck a deal which is likely to put pressure on countries like India. Meanwhile, a global agreement which was sought to be reached in Copenhagen in 2009 has been evasive. However, will there be an agreement in Lima or will continue to be el elusive? What are the factors which can help and or hinder such an agreement? We will discuss all this today with an eminent panel of guests. I have with me Dr. Jyoti Parikh, Executive Director, Integrated Research and Action for Development and also a former member of the Prime Minister's Council on Climate Change, Sunita Narayan, Director General Center for Science and Environment, Professor C.K. Varshni, former Dean School of Environmental Sciences, JNU, and Chetan Chauhan, Associate Editor, Hindustan Times. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Dr. Parik, uh, the question is that, you know, this conference which is going on in Lima, what is it that India can expect best out of it? I think that we are preparing for uh, also Paris Agreement, which would be a little more uh, serious than it has been in the past. And we are uh, looking at uh, more uh, inclusion of uh, equity, our concerns on uh, how fast we can do mitigation. Especially, I think that this time they are very keen on getting a comprehensive view of not only just mitigation, that was a big issue 23 years ago when the convention was written, but now uh, we will see that extreme events are uh, happening very f uh, frequently. So we are looking at a comprehensive package of technology, adaptation, and uh, factoring equity in it, and mitigation, of course. Uh, and um, the more uh, uh, ambitious the... Uh, U.S. and uh, developed countries' uh, targets are, the, the better it would be. And we do want a very um, uh, ambitious targets from them to lead us because these, we have a common but differentiated responsibility. And if they lead uh, into that, then we can follow it also up later. Okay. Uh, Sunita, Sunita the, you know, Dr. Parikh says that there should be ambitious targets. Is it, is, is it in the interest of India to have ambitious targets? Can India meet these kind of ambitious targets which the, West, which the developed countries will set for us? I meant ambitious targets for them. Also. For them also. But mainly them for, actually. For, oh, for both of them actually. Very much in India's interest to have... No, uh, it is very much in India's interest to have ambitious targets. Let's be very clear. We are very vulnerable to climate change. We know climate change is reality. We need the world to act. So we need ambition. The problem is not that we need ambition. The fact is what the developed countries would like is for them to be not ambitious and for India to have very ambitious targets. Absolutely. And that's what we have to make it clear. If you look at the India, if you, if you look at the deal that the US and China have just signed, it's a high, it's an extremely poor on ambition deal. The fact is the U.S. has now agreed with China that it will do even less than what it had agreed to do in Cancun almost five years ago. It is said that it will converge its per capita emissions with China at 12 tons in 2030. Right. This is completely unacceptable. So what we have, what India has to do is to ask for ambition, but also ask for equity. We should be prepared to say that we will also cut our emissions, but we will cut our emissions based on what is fair uh, for the entire world. And I think that's the position that the Indian government must go to Peru with. Well, but Sunita, the, the fact is that as you, have, as you have pointed out already, the, the US and China deal is not 
is not really as ambitious as as it should be and you know in this kind of an atmosphere now that the people mm. are now that uh, these these talks are already on there the conference is on there so what do you expect the indian indian delegation to do in this kind of a situation how does it deal with the india with the china us uh, agreement no i think you know I, i the problem is that the western press is already targeting india if you look at the number of articles that are appearing in the new york times foreign policy has done articles saying that india is the stumbling block now to a successful carbon agreement the fact is india must go being proactive but also absolutely clear that we are not the problem we are already taking steps to reduce our emissions our per capita emissions are 1.8 today even at business as usual in 2030 there will be 4 tons in 2030 it's far below what the world what the us and china have agreed to so india is not the problem india is willing to act india will play a responsible um, a nation's role but what india must go is to fight on behalf of the rest of the uh, world including africa to argue that we need atmospheric space we need the space to grow we are not asking for the right to pollute but we must insist on our right to development and that has to be the only agreement that we will push for in paris okay dr vashni what uh, what is india's position i think india's position is very clear that uh, we have been treated very very uh, disproportionately in fact our contribution and pressure in terms of emission is very very small though we are fourth in line but you see the difference between the pers- first one that is the china which is now emitting about uh, 28 billion tons per year and uh, ours is around 7 so i think we are nowhere in comparison with china and us then and why EU. is it that india is always targeted you know uh, because we know that there are uh, pressures which is other than the climate pressures which are also at work so it is a combination of many uh, political other situations which also combine to really pressurize and also that the india is claiming that we should have access to adaptation for which the technology must be provided for and i think it is to install all these things the pressures are really coming and also that the economic development should really be not as fast and so on and there are many other considerations which uh, knowledgeable people wish to really associate this with so considering that but i must tell you that this conference is going to see a altogether different kind of alignment because the brick is now very weak it has loosened itself right. because china has already dissociated without really consulting the brick members in terms of its commitment which was very ahead of this proposed conference and the commitment that they have made as sunita has said is far too short of the requirement that they are supposed to really make in order to meet the target of 2 degree centigrade because beyond this is going to be very catastrophic and the uh, expectations and the calculations and the uh, targets that have been worked out on the basis of the computer modeling is that problem is going to be very serious so i think they are in no way is going to really uh, meet their contribution which they are presently making also china says that by 2030 it will peak which right. means they will continue to increase and in that scenario and for what india happen- for india to really make any firm commitment that we are going to do this will not be a right thing to do however in the sark meeting which has been just concluded nepal you see there is now a pressure the sark was dormant from 2010 to 2012 right but now i think the sark is also becoming active because the india as uh, so india agreed. is leading the sark group uh, india is leading the sark group and now it is becoming one of the negotiating groups there absolutely and i think their representative will be participating while negotiations are going to take place so i think the scenario is such that by the paris conference which is going to be 2015 we must have some kind of a binding commitment of reduction from the major emitters who have got long history of emitting and really uh, burdening the at- global atmosphere okay uh, chetan you know there has been a change in government in india from the past say in copenhagen 2009 canton she was talking about do you see a change in the attitude of the indian government now do you, do you see it 
uh, you know, developing some kind of a strategy which is a better strategy than the past? And how do you look at How do you look at the government's <coughs> role and One position? One big change, if you've seen the, uh, on the climate issues, in the last few months is that India has agreed to discuss HFCs in under Montreal Protocol. For years, India had in, insisted that it should be discussed in under the Climate <coughs> Convention. So this is a big shift you have seen. My apprehension is an information that when the President Obama visits India, you will see India-US climate deal. It may, may not be on the lines of what US signed with uh, China, China, but there will be something will be coming out of it. So expecting that India will come out with the mission in Peru, I, uh, I don't think that it will happen. But India will have to take a leadership role. Because China has aligned with US, they had a bilateral agreement with US. So there is a space for India to take a leadership role for developing countries. The countries whose voice is not heard among rich nations in climate conferences. So this is a big, big opportunity for India to talk of the developing countries because situation in India is similar to many, many developing countries in uh, Africa, island nations. <clears throat> Unlike China, about 30% of Indians are still uh, below the poverty line, right. whereas in China it's only 10%. Our emissions are much, much less than China. So we can align easily with Africans, Latin Americans, then going in China. So this is a chance for India to show its leadership role in the emerging economy. I will also add one thing. Yes. That uh, China has not made any commitment, to be very frank. It only says that we will be peaking around 2030, yes. which means thereafter they will reduce, except that they have said 20% will be renewable energy by that time. But that in no way really makes a very significant reduction uh, commitment. And what actually they are going to reduce, they have not really said that anything. Is, anything after about actually what China, China after two thirty, in the next 20, 16, 30. 15, 16 years, China will almost double its uh, absolutely. emissions. Absolutely. Huh? So it will be a huge increase in huge emissions. What you need so is the level help. at which they will peak and you also how fast they will go down afterwards. No, but no, so they, they Dr. Parik, that, that, so. no, Dr. Parik, my question is, in, in the light of what Chetan was uh, talking about, India, U.S. having a, likely to have a deal on this in, when Obama comes here next month. Is that in the, is that in the best interest for India? If, you know, if you're going to be talking about taking a leadership role for the developing countries and you at the same time make a deal with U.S., how will, how will it be looked at? No, I, the, these deals don't count in the uh, UNFCCC. I mean, okay, they make good uh, news, news line, but finally what matters is uh, how it fits into the overall UNFCCC framework. Uh, no, no harm in uh, discussing with Obama. Uh, and uh, I feel that China has done this just fanfare uh, around this uh, with a fanfare. If the same thing was announced in, in the... Uh, uh, Lima in Lima, then they would not. People would have booed them. Said said that what is this we are talking about? We are here uh, gathered to reduce emissions to two degree level. You are talking about peaking after 2030. So uh, it, it, they got away with it without uh, doing this, doing before. Uh, and, and with U.S., which is a much higher per capita emissions. But um, in, in Lima, there are so many with much less. And I think we can use global world average as the per capita average as the benchmark. And those who are above should be a little bit different than those who are below. And uh, global average is about 4.85. Uh, Where does uh, India stand here? Tans India would be about 1.8. So, uh, and China would be six or so, yeah. So, we are still level, even no, no, below, far, below the, 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 below. the world far average below, level. Far below, yeah. far, far below. Per capita, I, in per fact, capita. we may not reach the current global world average till 2040, according to our, some of our modeling work that we do. Okay, Sunita, Sunita, the, the, no, in this, uh, at Lima, yeah. India is, in China, as, as my other guests were uh, saying here, China has announced its speaking year as 20, 2030. India also needs to announce... You think that you know we, India will be able to do it now, or do you think that there will be in it, it's, uh, India would be better off to wait wait for some more time till next year? No, I don't think India needs to announce a speaking year right now. I mean, China has announced a speaking year, but there's still a lot of questions on it. Um, our estimation is that if you take the current uh, rate of growth of emissions of China, they are talking about peaking at about 17 uh, uh, million tons uh, of carbon each year, which is very, very high. Um, and as I said, that leaves very little space for anyone else to grow. 
So actually, India cannot announce its peaking rate right now because in the current way, there is no space for India to grow. So what India has to do is to actually ask both China and the US to come back to the negotiating table, put more details down on the table in terms of when, how much will be their emission reduction, how, by when will they actually uh, reduce and how much, what will it be on a per capita basis, what will it be on a cumulative emission basis, so that then the world can come up with a much better way to stay below 2 degrees. You have to remember that if the world's target is to stay below 2 degrees, then the, so, then the budget that the world has for carbon is about a thousand uh, giga billion tons till 2100, so thousand. Now, in the way the US and China have put out their uh, commitment right now, they will both, with the EU, taking up 50% of the budget, which is ridiculous. Absolutely. So I think India has to go to uh, Lima not with a number, but with a demand to say that the world has to stay below 2 degrees. We need an ambitious target. We are vulnerable to climate change. We need all countries to be much more serious about how they will reduce emissions so that the world can stay below 2 degrees. So, so, and it's so, not going to be easy. Sumita. I agree with the other panelists. President Obama will be in India. There will be pressures on us. But I think it's important for us to be very clear that the world today needs strong leadership from the developing world. No, but uh, Sunita, you know, where do, where do we draw a line? If... if Yes. If, if there is going to be, if there is going to be pressure, in fact, there, there are already pressures are there in Lima itself, that you know India needs to first declare its speaking here, yes. and then and then you know, how how where do we stand as a country? Where do we stand to take a to take a stand on on yeah. on these issues? Do you think that you know we are we, we are prepared enough to take any stand on these issues? As far as development is concerned, as far no, as our requirements are concerned. Question. No, that's a very good question. I don't think we have our numbers done as uh, much right now for us to even say when will we peak. And I don't think my own reading of the climate negotiations is that India will come under a lot of pressure. But India must be able to say very clearly what is it already doing uh, to cut emissions. The fact is that we have uh, taken a number of steps, whether it is in the case of renewable energy, we've set a very large solar target. We also have made sure that we have a re we have an energy efficiency target now. We have already committed to reduction in, in, in emission intensity. So I think India must stop being defensive. And I think that's where our big change has to be. We have to both stop denying the fact that there is climate change because in the past half the Indian delegation used to go to these negotiations denying climate change. Right. The other half used to go and say that we don't have to do anything. I think what India has to do is to first start accepting the fact that climate change is an imperative for us. Secondly, we have to put on the table already what we are doing to reduce our emissions. Exactly. And thirdly, we have to be much more proactive in asking the rest of the world to cut emissions based on equity, which okay. means India must put a formula on the table on what it means by equity. We have to operationalize equity now. Absolutely. India's biggest problem has been that we say no, no, no but we don't know what we want. Exactly. I mean, that is the situation, to, uh, Professor Vashni. What do we want? And how much <coughs> How much have we done in terms of, you know, what we can show on the ground about cutting emissions? What? Where are we as far as that's concerned? Because, you know, we regularly read reports about the kind of pollution which is happening, the kind of emissions which are happening, the kind of development which is taking place, which is lopsided. Our, as far as I know, there is nothing in the public domain where we have an inkling that something has been worked out as to what will be our expected uh, commitments or uh, I should say declaration in terms of reduction. 
I think it will be some time later in the Paris conference that perhaps we might be able to provide some number. But we have to do a lot of homework before we can do that. But at the same time, I agree that we should really advertise that without really making a firm commitment, we have already taken the following voluntary decision. Right. And let us also understand... No, but are we in a position to say that? Uh, I think we are in a position to say that because we have lined up so many things which really tries to really... Uh, replace the carbon emission by all kinds of activities and we seems to be quite serious about it and I think we have something to show in terms of the solar energy that we now have as well as the wind energy in which we have made some progress but I think this need to really grow very much and we must also show that this is what our plans are this is what we have done in terms of carbon energy intensity I think India has done fairly well in certain sector steel is one and many others so I think all this need to be advertised that we are also making a great contribution with little resources or whatever it is we have without any technology support from support the, West, the West and I think that must be reckoned with that yes, yes uh, Dr. Parik. No, I think Ministry of Environment has uh, commissioned uh, three studies, modeling studies, where we, we are one of the parties and Terry and uh, IEG. Uh, we are looking at um, uh, till 2050 various scenarios and it's possible, I mean, uh, we have looked at uh, how with various uh, policies we go up and down and so on. So this whole scenario mapping exercise, one can see that India is mainly remains even below global uh, world average till 2040 under a very, very relaxed scenarios. If we take it very seriously, it would remain uh, uh, quite low. So, uh, I think uh, the uh, reason why the pressure comes is that we are fourth largest by chance and uh, uh, simply if, if because each state was simply a separate... Simply because of our population. Yeah, if, it, if each state was a separate country, they wouldn't look at us. Uh, but uh, the, the issue is that we are in one country and of course that increases our capability and we are willing to do as much as possible with our capability. And we do have some uh, possibility of leap, leapfrogging. For example, people don't have uh, lights in India, uh, uh, some 35% people, households. So it could, it's possible that, uh, you know, with LED and, and so on, so it's, we need not track the same thing that that US or China did, but we may have less emissions compared to uh, what they had. Uh, and this is just one example. Let's hope uh, many more uh, technologies will be in, um, in, in, uh, around. And it's, it's, it would be possible for us to remain fairly low um, uh, for some time, though uh, I cannot say that, uh, you know, there's no reason why we shouldn't be global world average uh, and more. Uh, but. Uh, what is mat what matters here is the uh, carbon space and the way it is being filled up by other countries. And okay. No, but I no, think Chetan, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you share the kind of optimism she has? No, I think that uh, in the climate conferences like Lima, India in the past has failed to showcase what it has done exactly. voluntarily right. to reduce emissions. Right. This time also these studies should have been done by now. Before but then Lima, by now the, 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 the negotiators Lima, should have had it in their hand then. Yeah. The negotiator should have these studies and said that this is all we have done. Right. Now in Lima, when they will pressure, they will be saying we are doing studies. Right. But other countries would have done similar studies, the rich countries, on what they have done so far for climate mitigation. So when it goes, India, <clears throat> when they go to climate negotiations, many of the guys are not well prepared for a negotiation at such a high level. So India, in most of the cases, is accused as a blocker. So I think this time India should project, try, the minister should try to change the image that being from a blocker, India should become a facilitator and should become a voice of developing countries. As you know, uh, by March for 2015, that, for that you, you by March 2015 be... every country has to give their intended uh, domestic actions. In Paris. Which, yeah, yeah, for Paris. So this will be a framework for the next summit and India has to prepare the ground for it. So that the stand becomes clear, everything becomes clear on that. Okay. Sunita? Sunita, uh, you know, this will, this will be the last round of questions. Yes. So, so I want you to uh, tell us that you know what do you think will be the will will be mm -hmm. the major stumbling blocks, if any, to to work out. First of all, can there be some any agreement at all in this in 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 this uh, uh, Lima Lima conference? And if there can be, what kind of an agreement do you do you expect? 
you know, Lima conference is a stepping stone to the Paris. To one. Paris. Yes. So what you have to look for is what will be the agreement in Paris. Right. Now, in Lima, the basic issue that has to be resolved is uh, how will the country's uh, INDCs, which are their targets or their commitments to cut emissions, how will countries put them on the table? What will be the agreement as far as the date for those uh, targets to be put on the table? And against how will the, how will the gap, because it is very clear that what will be put on the table is far lower than what the world needs to do to stay below two degrees. Right. So what Lima has to come together to say, how will the world increase the level of ambition after these targets are put on? So the basic stumbling block remains in climate change. The fact is climate change negotiations are not about the environment. They are about the economy. And for the last almost 25, 30 years, the world has been struggling to cut emissions because even now, no developed country knows how to cut emissions and yet grow. If you look at the U.S. today, U.S. is banking on shale gas to cut right. its emissions because right. it can reduce coal, go towards shale gas. But shale gas is very high on methane emissions, which is also a GHG emitter. Now, we know that energy is crucial for any economy. Absolutely. And we know that no country has actually weaned itself out of fossil fuel. Okay. So the big stumbling block for Paris is going to be how will the world agree to cut emissions at the scale it needs to cut emissions and how will the world agree that it will share those cuts equally, equally. amongst equally. nations. Okay, okay. I am very clear this okay. will not happen unless India puts very strong leadership. Okay. Uh, Dr. Vashni, very quickly. Uh, I think one of the two things that the conference at Lima must look at it, that what should be the baseline? Because U.S. has very conveniently said for shifting 1990 baseline, which was agreed earlier, to 2005 as a baseline for the reduction. So I think every country decides on its own that what the baseline one is going to follow, I think that's going to be a okay. totally... Dr. Dr. difficult Parikh? thing. So I think some of these issues must Dr. be rectified. Parikh, very, very quickly. Yeah, I think uh, uh, we have to calculate the carbon space available to us and how we share the carbon space equally and uh, uh, what technologies we, we should prioritize and share with, share with everybody. Okay. Uh, Chetan, very think, quick last word. Uh, for the, this big uh, the Lima conference, what the developing countries will get from it, the climate finance is the big issue. Until the climate finance issue is sorted out, I don't think there can be an agreement in Paris. Okay. I think on that note, we need to end. This is a very complicated issue, but at the same time, it is an issue which everybody, every country needs to take note of. The danger, the threat of climate change is something which is already on us. And so hopefully all the countries will realize and do something about it. We'll keep a watch on what will finally happen in Lima. Thanks to all my guests, Dr. Sunita Narayan, Dr. Jyoti Parekh, uh, Chetan Chauhan and Dr. Professor Vashni. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture, same, on, same time on Monday. Meanwhile, have a great weekend.